Hello everyone, welcome back. The Westport Country Playhouse would like to welcome to you to Coffee Break, and I'm your host, Jacob Santos. So we are in the midst of Pride Month. I know it might not feel like that for, for some people because we're all, you know, we're not allowed to go out and have our usual parades or celebrations as we normally would, but we're going to celebrate today here on Coffee Break. So once again, my name is Jacob Santos, and this is the space where we talk to artists about their career, representation, what's going on in their life. So welcome everyone. And my guest today is Carlos Encinas. He played Padre in our 2018 production of Man of La Mancha. So I'm going to have him on and we're going to talk about his career he is he has a family so we're going to talk about what I'm sure is like the extreme challenges of having a career and having a family and how to juggle that so let me bring him on here we go here we are do, 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 do. hmm one second Carlos, if you are watching right now, one technical difficulty, so I'm trying to add you, but it says you are unable to jo- Oh, nope, there we go. Here we are. Love it. Life- This is always the most nerve-wracking point of the show is Hey. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? I can so only well. add from my I'm I can only join from my um my phone, not my laptop. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I thought I could do that too. I could join from the laptop, but I guess for Instagram live yeah. it's, only, it's only over the phone, which is weird. All right, okay. Let me get set up. <laughs> Sorry. Of How course. Are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. So this is so interesting doing these coffee breaks because you and I, like many of the guests that I have on the show, we haven't had the we haven't been fortunate enough to meet in person. So like this is the first time we're meeting each other, which is so Correct. so interesting. <laughs> Good to meet you. Of course. How, how are you doing? You know, we're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're hanging in there like everybody and um I mean, it's month three, so it's, she's a little long. <laughs> she has overstayed her welcome. She needs to pack up. The curtains yeah. already needs to close. <laughs> Very it's that. Crazy. It's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy moment in time to live through, you know, mm -hmm. especially now with all of the, um, the protest going on as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's obviously it's, it's needed. And it's absolutely necessary, but it's it's just a lot to take in every day. It's like, well, what's going to happen now? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's so strange because um, yesterday was actually my last day of my fellowship at the Playhouse. So I actually got to go down to the actual building and clear up my desk. And I hadn't been to that actual space in three months. Like you just said, it's been three months since we've been in lockdown, which was wow. insane and really emotional to do. So, that, But here we are. But here we are. Yeah, to be thankful about that we are actually still here, healthy, uh, roof over our heads. So that's always great. Absolutely, absolutely. So Carlos, let me ask you the first question, which I like to ask all of my guests because I like to learn about the journey of how each artist began doing theater. So, like, what was your journey to starting to do theater? Uh, I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, so there's not really a lot of theater per se there, um, and my dad was a musician. So that really doesn't have anything to do with why I got into theater, but I, um, I was exposed to music a lot. And um, I, my grandparents took me to see a production of Annie when I was eight, and it definitely like, the little gay boy in me like went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it definitely, um, it definitely impacted me. And it wasn't really until high school that I really got serious about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was just basically through high school and I had a good friend that I would always sing with and um, we decided we would take a musical theater class in, in high school, which I was fortunate enough to have that. And from then on, it just became like, you know, one step led to another and um, I auditioned for a little 
amusement park in my town and, <laughs> and they told me I was a terrible dancer. If I ever wanted to work, I had to learn how to dance. So, oh, wow. I, you know, I, 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 we had no money. So I went and I sought out um, um, a scholarship to go to a dance studio. And then from there, I got a scholarship to go to, to school to study musical theater. So. Wow, awesome. I'm similar to you, but I started doing theater in high school as well. And I remember when I was going through high school, I was on like the cusp of like being out, being like this huge scandalous controversy to it being like not a, having you be a social pariah. So I remember for my theater club in high school, it was this really unique place because like it was this one bubble inside of the high school where every single person that was in the club was from a different social group, but then mm. it didn't really matter who you were once we went into that theater space. So like being gay or being part of the LGBTQ plus community, like wasn't an issue for people there, which was like this really inspiring and shocking thing to me. Cause I was like, there's jocks here. There's like popular people here, but like they yeah. don't care that I'm gay. So like, was that, has that been like the experience for you in theater? Like, being a queer person, being a gay man, has that, has theater been like a welcoming space for you? Um, I would say like in high school, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a little older than you, so yeah. I'm in my 40s. So yeah, you just didn't come out. I went to a conservative college, so that was also a no, but I think upon moving to New York, um, it definitely was a safe, a, a safe place to, to come out and express who you were. Um, just because of the nature of there's so many gay people mm -hmm. and um, people, sorry, there's a train going by. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and people are, 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 you know, definitely more progressive and more um, accepting. So, yeah, uh, I think my move to New York, coupled with starting to work in professional theater, I began to see that um, you could kind of just be a normal person. You know, being gay was just part of your identity. It didn't. It didn't um, define who I was necessarily, and it was not necessarily a bad thing. You know, that took a while to to unlearn, but <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So speaking of theater, you were in the Westport Country Playhouse's production of Matilda. You played Padre. So, what was that experience <laughs> like for you? It was awesome. Um, Man La Mancha was. It, funny enough, it was always kind of on my bucket list of shows to do, but I didn't know the story that well. Okay. I loosely knew the story of Don Quixote, but I had never seen, no, that's, that's a lie. I saw the, I saw production on Broadway, but didn't really remember, but I've always loved the music, loved, mm -hmm. loved the music. So I think for, in that, in that regard, it was absolutely thrilling. And then, believe it or not, you know, I've been doing professional theater for over 20 years and I can count on one hand okay maybe two hands how many um creatives of color I've actually worked with wow um, and you know working with obviously Mark I, I adore Mark and I got to know Mark almost through that but working with Marcos and with Andrew mm -hmm. who are both uh Latinx and uh, was it was, I don't know, it was just really unique um, being in a cast of mainly um, Latinx people uh, was, it was just really awesome. I don't know, I, I, I hadn't had that, I've had very few of those experiences to, which would seem crazy, you know, mm -hmm. but um, I think because of that and because of the really unique take they took on the show, mm -hmm. um, it was really, from start to finish, it was awesome i absolutely loved it awesome yeah definitely i didn't uh, unfortunately didn't get the opportunity to see man of la Mancha, but like my time at the playhouse it's one of those productions that always comes up in terms of like something that had, uh, made a great impact on the theater it's something that really <laughs> resonated with the audience member so like and it was definitely a hugely successful show so like what like what does it mean for you to be part of a production that's so part of your identity and really supported latinx artists and have it be so well uh, like received from people because we have like in the industry this idea that like people of color story people don't want to see or it doesn't sell but we know that's not true and like you being in man of la Mancha was like a fact of that so like how, how does that make you feel like being part of such a well-received i mean i kind of think of it i kind of liken it to like 
being gay. I, I, mm -hmm. I think when I grew up, I, there were no idols. There were no gay idols. There were no, there was no Will and Grace on TV, you know, when I was young. And I think once you become part of a community, you, you, you just feel a little more whole and you feel more accepted. And I think um, being, being, you know, Hispanic um, and being able to be around people who are like you and, you know, you kind of save, I mean, obviously Latinx people are so very varied as it is, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm from New Mexico. We had some Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, every, uh, Hispan actual people from Spain. So everybody's very different, but we, there's some commonalities that you share because of um, how you're perceived and your experience. And I think it was just, I don't know, it just felt really, I think it's part of that journey of, not to be like too deep, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a journey of accepting who you are, you know? Cause if you really think about it in the movement that we're in, um, musical theater is kind of, a, a, it's very, it, it's been controlled by and done by, by, um, white people for you know it's got that that's just the that's just the history it doesn't mean that there aren't stories for um for people of color but i think um you don't i have not like i said i have not done that many um shows or played many roles where it was it was the it was the dominating theme and it was really it was really i guess liberating would be the the word i don't that might be taking it too far, but it, it did feel really like really good. I, you know, I remember doing the opening number every night and we had a Marcos, the choreographer, um, and he, uh, associate directed it as well. Uh, we, we had all these, the, these, um, flamenco and Spanish sort of things tied into the choreography. And there was this, like, I had also been to Spain with my husband and my two boys, the, the year, the, the summer prior and I, mm -hmm. that, I remember sitting and watching flamenco, these flamenco dancers for like two hours and my kids, you know, who are absolutely insane, sat there and there was something about that feeling of being in this gorgeous space and watching a, a part of my heritage and my background mm -hmm. that really impacted me. And I remember recreating that on stage every night. I, I'm, I'm getting the chills just thinking about it because it was really, it was really this, you know, this like, our stories matter, you know, mm. and I, I guess you always feel that, but until you really can be a part of something that includes you, it, it, I don't know, it just, it does, it feels like you kind of get, you're kind of healed a little through mm -hmm. that, through that process. That might be taking it too far, but. <laughs> no, definitely. I think it's so hard to explain to people who don't see themselves on film and stage like what that experience is once you finally see yourself on this like monumental stage or on screen like i was telling other guests before that like the playhouse's production of in the heights was the first time i had mm -hmm. ever seen a musical with latinx people in it so like having that first experience as an adult seeing myself on stage in a musical like there aren't really easy words to find out how to describe that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because oftentimes, you know, I, I, like I said, I've been auditioning for over 20 years. I can't tell you how many times I auditioned for like, you know, the, the, the pool guy or the bodega worker or the delivery guy. And obviously, yes, there are a lot of Latins who are those <laughs> things, but that wasn't my experience, you know? Uh -huh. So to be my, to see, to your point, to see yourself represented in a way that, that isn't like, the stereotype, it really is, it, it's powerful. And I, you know, I wish there was more of it happening. Mm -hmm. So Carlos, there are many extraordinary things about you, but one of the most extraordinary things to me is when I found out you are a working artist with a family, like that, how, and like a lot of our community questions for you was like, how do you juggle auditioning and being a working artist with a family? So like, what is that experience even like? Um, I mean, probably the best word to describe would be a little chaos. <laughs> yeah. It's a little chaotic, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I guess it's like anything you, it becomes your new normal. Um, and uh, it, it's definitely always like a balancing act. Mm. Uh, it, it's a balancing act to make sure you're, you're kind of have a little bit of a creative outlet 
it's a balancing act to make sure you're, you know, you're remembering to like kiss your spouse goodnight and not just fall on the bed and be exhausted. It's a, it's a balancing act to make sure you're being kind and like, you know, and warm to your children when you're stressed about an audition or you're exhausted because you got home at one in the morning from doing a show and then you got to go, you know, so it's just this constant balance, but I guess, I guess if anybody's going to be good at balancing, it's people in theater because you, you're, I, I think people in theater have had, especially musical theater, because we had to learn mm -hmm. to sing and dance and act and, and walk on our hands and like, you know, there's, it's a multi talent, multifaceted talent, a musical theater actor. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you do kind of, it was good practice, I guess, <laughs> for kids, although there was nothing that really prepared me. Yeah, definitely. So I want to ask you that, that we are in the middle of Pride Month, and I feel like that word pride and like the month-long celebration means so many different things to people. So like, I want to ask you what pride means to you, especially in the face of like, I feel like recently, and it was really noticeable last year that like pride somehow got co-opted by different like corporations and companies. And it kind of became like this capitalistic thing where it's just like, we're going to have a pride line of clothes and makeup. And fast food places had like pride shakes and things like that. But like when we get down to the <laughs> deep of it, like as actual queer people, like what does pride mean for you? Well, I mean, you know, it's funny. You, you, you sent that question and I was kind of th pondering it and thinking it. And the, I don't know if this is a good answer, but it, what came to my head was like, it's the opposite of the shame that you grow up with. You know, you kind of grow up with, this shame of I'm different, um, I'm not, I'm less than, you know, I'm, I, I, you, you could go on all these, uh, I could, I could, you know, say many other things. And I think pride is like coming into just being literally proud of who you are and being, and wishing that you weren't any other way, you know, mm. and um, the celebration of pride, again, moving to New York, I was like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> there is a parade. And obviously there's like, you know, what you see in the parade. Uh, I, I don't really identify necessarily with like riding a float in, in, um, in, a, in a Speedo or uh, dressing in drag, although I have zero problem with that. I mean, I'm like that, but that's the, that's the point of pride. Like you get to express it how you want. And I think um, the things that I'm proud of, you know, having a marriage that has lasted 15 years, having kids. And I remember when my husband and I got married, we, we said to each other, like, you know, we don't have to do it the way straight people do. We can, we can choose to have marriage or a relationship like the straight couples that we know and respect. But that's kind of along with pride is like, we get to do it our own way. We get to define the rules for ourselves and we get to um, make it look like we want it to look. And oftentimes it looks like, you know, like everybody else, but, but, yeah. um, but having that freedom, I think after you grow up with shame is like, is again, it's liberating to think I can do this however I want. And yes. as long as I'm not being an asshole and I'm treating others with kindness. Um, so yeah, I think that's a long answer, but it definitely, started with like it's the opposite of the shame that i once mm. kind of felt about myself awesome definitely that's definitely a way that i relate to that word as well yeah i know we have some community questions i wrote one of them down but i think some people are writing down here let me see if i can pull up let me see okay here we go so angie palacio just wants Wait, say that. Uh-oh. I think you broke up. OK. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Back now. OK, yeah, you're good. Awesome. OK. So Angie would like to know if you have a favorite playwright or composer. Um, well, that's a good question. Let me think about this. Well, my, probably my, my, the one that comes to mind is Lynn Nottage. She mm. wrote Crumbs from the Table of Joy and Sweat. She's, 
the only woman um, to win two times the Pulitzer for for drama, mm -hmm. um, and she's uh, she's uh, she's a African American woman. I teach at a performing arts high school, so um, you know I always like I'm always trying to find. I teach musical theater majors. These kids are incredible, and um, obviously the a lot of what I know are white playwrights, white male playwrights. Um, Tony Kushner is one of my favorite playwrights as well, um, but Lynn I found through one of my one, one of my best girlfriends, and um, I like she's written the book to the um, Secret Life of Bees mm -hmm. uh, show the uh, off Broadway musical, um, and she's I think there's one other musical books that she wrote, but and composers I mean I'm kind of a Sondheim fan. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't love Sondheim? <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So actually, the next community uh, question, actually, usually the last question I ask my guests. So this will be the last question for you, and then we'll say goodbye. But uh, Hello, Drew B wants to know, do you have any favorite plays slash musicals that highlight the LGBTQ plus experience? Um, I love falsettos and a new brain. I mean, they're a little bit old school, <laughs> yeah. but, um, I definitely love those two shows. The music's great. The story's really, it's just, they're good. They're really good. And that, you know, it kind of reminds me of college and moving to New York. I listened to those soundtracks a lot during that time. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Carlos, thank you so much for joining me. Of course. So special. It's good to meet you. <laughs> of course, yeah. Virtually quarantine me. <laughs> awesome. Carlos, you have a great day. I'm wishing the yes. best for your family and health. Thank and safety. you. So of course. Bye. Okay, bye. Awesome. Thank you all so much. And thank you to Carlos for joining us today for this Pride theme episode. Like, I cannot imagine juggling, like I'm really new in the industry. So like juggling my personal life with like a theater life seems like this huge monumental task. So the fact that Carlos can have a partner and have two kids and is doing the thing out there and being proud and out and just exceptional, it's just amazing. And it was so great to have you on. So thank you all for joining us today. We'll be back next week at 4 p.m. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.